The religious love to try to um, debunk atheists, but they only manage to make themselves look ridiculous in the attempt. We can't be debunked because we make no claims to debunk. Then again, according to them, everybody has to be just like they are, even though they're not. They're just wrong all the time. So let's watch them keep proving it again and again and again. Welcome back to Reform Zoomers claimed answers to all atheist questions or whatever the hell it is. But it's not actually answers, is it? It's just claims and empty ones at that. This is just what he really wants to believe. And I think that if you spend any time around the religious, you'll find that's how it works for pretty much all of them. They just have faith. And I'm sorry to say, but your faith doesn't matter. You will never convince them of that, of course, but it remains true nonetheless. So let's get back to it. There's 4,000 gods that people believe in, and you're atheist to 3,999 of them. I just go one god further. Now, I have seen people use that before, but I still think it's dumb because it entirely misunderstands the religious. I've also seen people say, well, once you understand why you reject 3,999 other gods, you'll understand why I reject yours. And no, that's not true. The reason they reject 3,999 or whatever it is other gods isn't because they have rationally evaluated each and every one of them or even collectively and come to that conclusion based on the complete lack of evidence to support any of them that they probably don't exist or at the very least that there's insufficient evidence to support them. It's because the god that they do believe in says that those others aren't real. There's never been any intellectual thought put into it at all. It's just faith and fifis wrapped up around emotional comfort. And it's still just stupid. So don't use that one. It gets you nowhere and is just false. Okay, this isn't the gotcha that you think it is, because the question of whether some sort of God exists is fundamentally different from the question of which religion is right about God. That assumes that any religion is right about God. Any god and that isn't valid until you can show that some religion out there is actually right about their gods because again based on the evidence which is all that ought to matter none of them are the only way to get to right and by that i mean factually true evidentially supported and objectively so in the real world that we all share is to be able to show that it's actually true and none of them are even trying to do so if you notice and i've made that point a lot as I've said before, there is no scientific institute for the existence of any god. You only have churches, and churches don't care about evidence. They rely entirely on faith. Just believing in a god, like the little thing down the corner says, doesn't mean that there is a god. Any more than believing that you are a magical pink unicorn means that you are. Your beliefs mean absolutely nothing if they're not based on demonstrable evidence. And I wish these people could figure it out. If God created everything, then who created God? That's not really the gotcha that people who say that think it might be, especially phrased like that. Of course, it doesn't work for the religious either, which we'll get to in a second. But the religious are relying on some very poor claims to justify their own beliefs. They will claim that something couldn't come from nothing, which absolutely nobody says except for the religious, so it's just a complete straw man. They will say that causality can't go back into the infinite, which again, they're the only ones who say that. The honest fact is, though, we don't know. We can only tell you how our particular instantiation of space-time worked, at least going back to Planck time. Beyond that, we have no clue. And in fact, at least at present, we can have no clue. That's why the religious invented gods in the first place, at least one of many reasons, because they want to know what is, at present, inherently unknowable. Yet wanting to know a thing that you don't know doesn't mean that you know that thing. 
Let's just get into the religious side of it, though, because that's mostly what I've talked about so far. Well, God is defined as the uncaused causer. You don't get to just define reality into existence. You don't get to define real things however you happen to like them. You have to be able to go and look at them to see how they actually are. The second anyone says, God, by definition, they've lost. They can show no conceivable way how they've come to that definition rationally. It's all just made up. Show me how you, or anyone else, got to that demonstrably. Because they can't do it. This is just an assertion, not a definition. And that is not remotely impressive. Everyone knows there needs to be a first cause at the beginning of the chain of all events in the universe. Do they, though? Because that's not actually how it works. This is just, well, it seems to me, which means absolutely nothing, coupled with, but everybody else is just like I am, which is patently false. That's the problem with living in a religious echo chamber, or any kind of echo chamber at all, where the only voices that you hear are the ones that agree with you, because you won't allow anyone who doesn't already agree with you inside. This is a general assumption that everything that we see today has always been that way, because that's what we see today. And that's not how that works. That is not rationally defensible. In fact, I've had creationists tell me that evolution couldn't happen because the Earth couldn't have been any different, ever, because look out the window. Now that's about as stupid as saying, night is imaginary because the sun's right there. Now, that's on a much shorter time scale, granted, but the simple fact is, the planet hasn't always looked like it does today. The universe hasn't always looked like it does today. There comes a time where all of our experiences and our assumptions break down because things change. It's not like that. That's not how it works. Deal! And it makes a lot more sense for that first cause to be a personal god who caused things for a reason, rather than some random impersonal force. Says who? Oh, I know you want there to be a personal god, but that doesn't mean that one exists. Remember, we're here after actual reality, not just emotionally comforting wishes and dreams. Again, it just makes more sense. It's just, well, it seems to me, and I want it to be that way. But that doesn't mean anything in actual reality. Everyone isn't just like you. In fact, increasingly, people are becoming very different from you, and hopefully that trend continues and religion goes completely extinct. Because wouldn't that be nice? Science disproves God. No, it doesn't. Science can't even address gods in that way, and the religious tend to just make them up anyhow. Science also doesn't disprove invisible, intangible, universe-creating pixies. Anybody who uses this one is an idiot. Science doesn't disprove anything. Science only fails to confirm things. It fails to falsify things. Science evaluates evidence and builds models. Those models are always, by necessity, provisional. If we were to find more evidence tomorrow that completely overthrows the current paradigm, things would change. Because that's how science works. So, I'm kind of going to agree with him here, at least as far as the words on screen goes. It is a bad argument, often based on ignorance. It's not really even an argument, though, because none of these really are. It's just a statement. So, let's see his side of things, which I wager is going to be just as bad. Well, actually, the church invented modern science. There you go. In fact, the church had nothing at all to do with it. People did. The people might have been members of the church, they might have been believers in the religion, but correlation is not causation. As time went on, science left the purview of religion and became its own thing. The church fought tooth and nail to rein science in, killing and imprisoning scientists who were uh, showing that reality isn't how the church wanted it portrayed. And I can't think of a single case where science has confirmed the supernatural teachings of any church anywhere at any time. So, this is just a nonsensical argument. 
All the founders of the scientific revolution deeply believed in God, and medieval theologians laid the groundwork for modern science by saying the world was governed by an intelligent creator. That means we can understand the world with our intelligence. And studying God led to studying the world because the world is God's creation. That's your claim. Now, I guess it's no surprise that he understands science no better than his supposed atheist strawman version of it, since none of this is stuff that is popular in atheist circles. I mean, I've heard that more times than I'd like to admit, and I've debunked it plenty, but just being an atheist doesn't mean that you have a brain in your head. The people don't matter, only the evidence does. However, whatever that initial state of science was, that has absolutely nothing to do with what science is today. This is, again, just the religious living in the past because they can't handle the present. Today, the overwhelming majority of scientists, the overwhelming majority of scientists, are atheists. And it's been like that for a very long time. It's time that the religious learn to deal with it and just move on. God is just used to fill in the gaps of things that science can't explain yet. That is true, at least in part. However, the religious tend to get emotionally attached to the God idea, and even when science does discover the truth, they are loath to just give up on their imaginary friends and go with reality. And that's not something to be proud of. This is why the whole God of the Gaps thing is so silly where the religious just stuffed their imaginary father figure in the sky into all the gaps in scientific understanding, but those gaps are getting fewer and much farther between every single day. We don't understand everything. We never will, since every question answered poses a dozen more, but we're running out of places for the religious to hide their gods. And I think that's a very good thing. It just makes the religious look desperate, which, um, let's be honest, they are. Well, actually, God is the reason for everything, even things that science can explain. It's not one or the other. It's not like everything's explained by either science or God, and the more science can explain, the less God can explain. Really, science can explain almost everything, but God is still behind it all. That's just your claim, though, and this is a childish claim. But I'm still right! Yeah, that's just an empty assertion, nothing more. It doesn't matter how many times that you claim that your imaginary friend is responsible, because if you can't demonstrate that it's true with objective, verifiable evidence, then you're just yanking the whole thing out of your asshole. This is how the religious tend to work, right? We're right because we say so. But that doesn't mean anything. What you claim without any corroboratory support is irrelevant. Yet the religious, they can't understand that, can they? They don't care. They just really want to believe. Just because you invented a god that lives in your head and is the answer to positively everything according to you, that doesn't make any of it real. Because science explains the how and God explains the why. Says you. You haven't demonstrated that there is a why. You've only claimed it blindly. Again, this is why the religious go so wrong all the time, because they just don't care. I know I keep saying that, but it is actually true. They're after comfort, not fact. So long as their tall tales make them happy, why the hell not, right? You will find theists that are completely fine with that, which I find eminently sad. They know that they're full of crap, but they still embrace it because, I don't know, they like crap, I guess? You like rolling in crap? I don't know, it sounds like a personal problem to me. If God is good, why can't he destroy all evil? Well, that's just the problem of evil. Now, I'm sure he's going to throw this off on free will or God has a plan or some stupid crap like that, but that doesn't actually solve anything, does it? Under an omni-property God, there can be no free will because God has already foreseen everything, even every decision that you will ever make in your life, and if you can't do something God hasn't foreseen, then free will goes completely out the window. 
Now, I don't really want to get into a free will discussion here because that always turns into, well, it seems to me on all sides, and that's not very productive to begin with, so I'm not going to do that. Now, keep in mind that if God has these omni properties, it isn't that he can't destroy evil, as the question asks, it's that he doesn't want to, because if he wanted to, evil wouldn't exist. And that just makes God a dick. Well, he eventually will. Says who? Now, I get that those are your beliefs, but that doesn't demonstrate that your beliefs are true. It's like saying, Harry Potter will eventually destroy Voldemort. Yeah, but that's a fantasy story, and it's not professing anything that's demonstrable in reality. Granted, the Bible is just a fantasy story too, so, um, yeah. Why can't he do it now? Because he'd have to destroy you. Yet, God supposedly created me this way, right? Why would God create me in such a way that his only choice would be to destroy me down the line? Because again, your God is a dick. This really gets back to the kind of simplistic thinking that the religious are full of. I can come up with plenty of solutions for how uh, teleological evil could be destroyed, yet not destroy humanity at all. If I can come up with solutions just off the top of my head, then why can't God? Oh right, because it's all just made up. These are just excuses invented to explain why the universe looks in a certain way that it absolutely should not look like if an all-powerful omni-property God actually existed. This is just nonsense. Anybody surprised? Why does God let any bad things happen? Because we deserve it. Says who? Because again, God supposedly made us this way. God had to know what would happen, and yet did it anyhow. That makes God a dick. Free will can't exist with an omni-property God. That's why Christians have been trying unsuccessfully for many, many years to redefine God so that God isn't the asshole that he would have to be by definition. That's why the Catholics have been pushing some form of Molinism since the Middle Ages. Well, God isn't actually all-knowing. Well, yeah, we've been seeing this for a while now. God isn't actually all-powerful. To get around the problem that God seems bizarre if you can't violate logic, but as an all-powerful God certainly would be able to if he were, in fact, all-powerful, right? I've made that point many times before. If God wanted to make a married bachelor, then he'd just have to alter the definitions for either married or bachelor, and he could do it. After all, God not only had to make the stuff, but he had to make the concepts of the stuff. An all-powerful God would be able to alter the concepts at will. Then again, lots of people are going to look at that if the religious even tried to make those changes and said, that's dumb, and they're not going to join the cult, and they won't give them their money, and that's what they're really after to begin with. We know what this is all about. Sad to see that the religious just can't figure it out. Well, animals don't sin, so why do they suffer? Well, the Bible says all things will be restored, so if God is good, we can assume that they will be compensated. That's just a bald rationalization. Can we go to a child that's being beaten daily or sexually abused and say, well, it's okay if you get raped on the regular because someday you're going to get rewarded? Yeah, again, God is a dick. It isn't enough for that to be someday. These are just excuses to wrangle their way around the reality that we actually live in. This is what happens when they have no real answers. They're just backed into a corner and have to come up with an emotionally comforting story to tell themselves so they just don't feel so bad. It's just not consistent with their concept of a god. So, when they have problems, they just change things. But you can't do that with anything that's actually real, because real things are what they are. But the religious don't care, do they? God is just a security blanket, and they can alter it at a whim. It just proves that they don't actually think that God is real, or at least they should understand this. Then again, these people are idiots. How do you know that God isn't evil instead? 
Well, because evil is not a thing the way good is. Just like cold is just a lack of heat, and dark is just a lack of light, evil is just a lack of good. And for good to be objective, it needs to come from God. So a God who is objectively evil is logically impossible. And the bold rationalizations just keep coming. I just let that one play because I had an inkling what he was going to try to pull, and uh, I wasn't wrong. First off, good isn't a thing. Good is a subjective claim about things that we find favorable, just like bad is the stuff we don't like. It's always been that way, and it will always be that way. Here, he claims that good is whatever is in accordance with God's nature, but since he can't conceivably know what is in accordance with that nature, because he can't prove that the thing that he's claiming has a nature is actually real, this whole thing is just nonsense. Remember, the religious are just making this stuff up. God is whatever I want God to be. Oh, they'll deny that, of course, but that's demonstrably what's going on. How do we tell? We ask them, how do you know that? Because they have no demonstrable answers. They just want to believe it. Try explaining all the problems to them, and they won't care. Because faith is all they have, and faith is all they want when they really need to have some brains. And this whole thing is just dumb. Can God make a rock he can't lift? Well, you're just asking if God can contradict himself, like can God lie, or can God change, or can God make another God? The answer to all of that has to be yes. Again, this is just a problem with the Omni Properties, and those are things that the religious just made up to begin with. If the Omni Properties are true, and God can do anything, then God should be able to contradict himself, and then just change reality so it isn't a contradiction. Of course, that's just going to make people look at them funny and walk away, which they don't want to happen because they're losing a lot of money, so they just try to rationalize their way around it. How? By claiming that somehow they understand God's nature. And how exactly do they know that? Details, please! Because they don't have any. This is where you have to keep putting the pressure on, because eventually, they're either going to have to admit that they don't know, or they're going to have to run away, which is the most common. Or in rare cases, they're just going to attack you to shut you up. I've had all three of those things happen. I've had to put people down on the floor because they took a swing at me. This is all just emotional, not remotely intellectual. It's not something that we should really be surprised by, but uh, there you go. And the answer to all those things is no. God being all-powerful means he can do anything to things outside himself. It doesn't mean that he can do anything to himself or that he can contradict himself. How do you know that? Because I've already dreamed up scenarios where he certainly should be able to, given the made-up characteristics that you people have just randomly stapled onto him. Yet, here he is, confidently stating things that he has absolutely no way that he can conceivably know just because he really wants it to be true. Don't let them get away with it. How do you know that is a powerful tool? Any time they start yanking claims out of their asses, which should start about 10 seconds after they begin talking about their imaginary friends, start asking them to intellectually justify their claims. How do they know the things that they claim to know? How do they back them up? Because as soon as you do that, you find out that their answers are not pretty. Be ready for some uh, self-defense if you're doing this face-to-face. -face. Why did God let evil exist at all? so he could be glorified in defeating it. So, your god is still a dick. It always comes right back to this, right? If your god is all-powerful and all that, then why should he care about being glorified? If he needs worship, then he's not self-sufficient, is he? There goes perfection. You can't just let up. Eventually, probably, they're just going to say, but I have faith, and that's just an admission of loss. Anyone can have faith in anything. I can proclaim faith in invisible, intangible, universe-creating pixies. They told me that the Christian God isn't real, don't you know? So, how do I know that? Because they told me. You know, parrot back the stupidity that they've been spouting all along, and watch how they react. 
because they don't react well. It's embarrassing, but then again, belief in gods is inherently embarrassing to begin with, right? Triumph over evil is a greater good than evil having just never existed. Says who? This is only the case if you have an ego on overdrive, which is no surprise since God was invented by humans with egos on overdrive. If you just want your creation to be happy, then why in the world would you throw obstacles in their path that doesn't demonstrably improve the situation? This just makes you a dick, which, as we all know, the Christian God absolutely is one, if he is at all like Christians portray. Zoomer, of course, would never agree, but why would you care what the terminally delusional have to say? I mean, seriously, go watch this guy's social media accounts, because he is a fucking freak. I know I don't do that very often, because holy shit, I got no time for that, but uh, it is fun to just laugh at these buffoons, isn't it? Religion is just wishful thinking. Well, if that were true, then the Bible wouldn't be all about how much we all suck. Absolutely it would. These ancient tribal religions have always been about how much people suck. Remember, Yahweh started off as a Midianite tribal god that the early Hebrews um, borrowed with some massive air quotes. Huge parts of the Old Testament are God making fools of the gods of other people and the people themselves. Well, my god made your gods. Yep, yeah, sure, okay, whatever. But that kind of plays into what he said in the last question. If God supposedly made everything, then how do we explain the priests in Exodus 7 who did all the magic? Modern Christians just rationalize that it was demons or devils or something stupid like that, but clearly it was intended to show that Yahweh was more powerful than the other gods of the surrounding peoples, and thus followers of those gods suck. Then, once this became all about control, which is all religion ultimately is, and of course the clergy class started pushing, well, you people suck, so that they'd have to come crawling to the priesthood for forgiveness, and to hand over their money because the priesthood doesn't want to work. Can't forget about that. This just shows how little understanding Zoomer and people like him actually have. As if that's any surprise. And that's where we're going to cut it for the week. Honestly, does he think he's actually answering anything here? He's just making claims and proclaiming faith, but he's not actually addressing anything that actual atheists say, nor would his um, answers convince anybody that he's right. This is just faith in Fifi's once again, which is hardly a surprise. This is just wishful thinking, and redeemed Zoomer is an idiot. And that's why he's getting trashed, not only in downvotes, but in the comments on his video. Keep in mind, this is a big channel, for some bizarre reason, and he's still getting his ass handed to him. Not that I suspect he cares or anything, because, um, you know, religion. So, we'll be back next week, and I'd like to think that we're going to finish this up, but I can't promise anything. It looks like we will, but... You know, I don't want to make promises I can't keep. This time we managed to get through 2 minutes and 33 seconds worth of his content, and we still have 2 minutes of 24 seconds remaining. So, I guess it all depends on just how much criticism I have to apply to his silly answers. I'm hoping. Keep your fingers crossed. Not that that means anything, but um, I'll try. His uh, answers are just stupid. They're not really answers, they're just excuses. He's got no means whatsoever to demonstrate that anything that he actually says is true, but since when did truth mean anything to a theist? Never. Not ever. Not once. <laughs>